Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the first ever Sammy uh, STEM professional panel episode. Today, I'm joined with Mr. Leo Gallus. He's a very close mentor of mine. Uh, so please welcome him. Um, he is a currently an engineer, engineering student at Texas A&M. Um, so we're going to talk about why he chose engineering. Um, and yeah. So let's start with the first topic. Why did you choose engineering? Sure. So, um, I mean, my dad's an automation engineer, so I've been around um, engineering basically all my life. I started working with Arduino stuff when I was really young. My dad showed me some stuff and I kind of really got into that stuff pretty early and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I think the real big like engineering more so breakthrough in terms of like actually working on teams and working with people was when I joined FLL in seventh grade, I think it was, or sixth grade. And so that was kind of when I really knew, you know, robotics and engineering is something I want to be a big part of my life uh, because it was just something I really, really enjoyed a whole lot. And now on the other hand, my mom's, uh, she's a dentist. So I've been around the medical field for a lot of my life as well. And so I was always like torn between those two things. And, you know, when I was researching majors and stuff for college, I learned, hey, there's this biomedical engineering thing, right? And so that's eventually what I'm hoping to get into with uh, ETEM being a thing. We'll find out for sure soon. But um, I really want to work on prosthetics because it's just something that I learned about pretty early, like bionic prosthetics. It's a really cool kind of combination of robotics where you have that engineering style, like, development and design and coding and all those things that you need to like do that really kind of fill in that engineering gap that I've always wanted to fill in from the stuff that I've learned in the past and from the stuff I've been doing you know that creative sort of aspect of engineering will also help the aspect of the medical field where you're able to help people who you know are in a tough situation yeah for sure for sure um so I heard you mention something about FLL uh can you please explain on what that is because uh, not all of the audience might know what FIRST programs are. Yeah, sure, of course. So FLL stands for FIRST LEGO League. It's a program that I believe starts, do you know when it starts, on, James? I don't remember. I'm not too sure about that. I joined FIRST Robotics in middle school, so. But it should, pretty, I'm pretty sure. yeah, it, sh it, it offers programs from like elementary school, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's a, definitely, there's also FLL Junior in elementary school, but yeah, there's a whole yeah. range. FIRST is kind of like a, very broad um i don't remember what it stands for uh first it's like do you, do you know it <laughs> i don't remember whatever it's a it's a sort of engineering thing to promote uh stem programs for kids and they run a bunch of different competitions ranging from stuff that's you know early elementary school where you're building is very very basic stuff to sort of get kids interested and show them how to do it into FLL, which is where i started which is where you kind of build these robots using um Legos uh, EV3 program, I think is what it is now, mm -hmm. where you have these little like Lego based electronic motors. You have these Lego based like little computer that you put on your thing and you build something out of Legos, which most kids by that point have had experience with just because of how widespread they are. And so it's a way of taking something that they're really familiar with in the form of Legos and, you know, building and messing around with that stuff and sort of integrating that new component of, you know, the, the more technical engineering aspect of coding it's very simple block coding um motors how they function you know mechanical transfers stuff like that using gears and stuff with those motors and also a really big component of it is that problem solving aspect so what you'll have is you'll have this big board and they'll have you do different tasks that are worth different amounts of points based on how hard they are and you have to set up your robot and program it to do those things and it's a really really good way to sort of integrate that new problem solving and more technical engineering stuff into what they're already really familiar with. And that's where I got started because I've been building Lego since I was, what, four years old. So it, I, I've been super experienced with them. And then, you know, now they start throwing in, oh, now you have these motors that you power and you can use them to do, to like make the robot, make your Lego creation basically drive around and do stuff. And that's just such a cool thing to experience. And it's a great sort of thing to do. And from there, I went to FTC, which is first tech challenge, which is where you, basically take away those Legos. I mean, you can still use them, but it's really not as, it's not very doable. It's when you start integrating, you know, actual CAD design, 3D printing, it's more where you 
it, it's a smaller robot than FRC, which is the high school only biggest bot program. That one's pretty crazy. But FTC, what that is, is it's just, you know, you have an 18 by 18 by 18 inch space. You could put whatever you want in there. You're limited to what electronics you could use. Uh, but you can put whatever you want in there realistically in terms of metal. Like you can use whatever materials you want. You can develop stuff. And that's where you really break free from the limit that those Legos created. And now you're able to make something that's basically an industry robot to an extent. You're allowed to use cameras and vision. And it's, it, that's where it starts to go into more actual robotics and pull away. So Legos, the first FLL program is kind of pulling in those kids and then getting them ready to get into that FTC program where it's basically a smaller version of like what industry standards are. And then FRC is basically just full on industry standards. You can basically do whatever you want to an extent. Still limits, but yeah. Yeah, so for the audience, basically, no matter your age, um, if you're interested in engineering or STEM, um, you can join a FIRST program and you can just build really cool looking robots that can uh, do certain functions. And uh, FIRST isn't only limited to just uh, building, it also offers opportunities for um, programmers and like uh, engineering notebook writers. Um, That's a huge with, business aspect too. Yeah, yeah. Especially so, and like fundraising and stuff. Yeah, so FIRST really offers uh, a really wide aspect of essential skills that you'll probably need later in life to get a like a really good job and stuff. Plus the, um, the team skills and presentation skills you learn. From yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it's really hard to join like a first team. Uh, uh, you can. First teams are kind of difficult sometimes, but everything else usually there's something in your area, almost always. Yeah. yeah. Usually there's like an FLL team or an FTC team, just yeah, anywhere. Yeah, FLL teams and... I think are pretty widespread. FTC teams are getting very widespread. You can basically find something around you for the most part, no matter where you are. A lot yeah. of schools have them too, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both me and Leo participated in uh, FIRST programs, and we can really tell that it's really influential on you. It really helps you like uh, grow as a person. It helps you just build better, get better at just soft skills like presentations and uh, just being more organized in time management. So if and you're really about. interested, if you're really interested in STEM, uh, you should definitely uh, look for a first team or any first program near you. And they're usually pretty, pretty widespread. So you can easily find one. And on top of that, I'm not sure what the age range of the audience is, but I'm telling you, FTC carried my AM application. Absolutely one of the biggest reasons why I got into that. So like if you're it not only does it like make you a better person, which is obviously the most important part, but it looks good on college applications if you're good at it. Uh there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities or sponsorship, uh scholarship opportunities um that you can take a look at whenever you're getting towards that point in your life. So it, it's a whole it's everything from economics and business and presentation soft skills and hard skills and technical stuff and um, college applications, financial support for college. It, it really just supports you as a person all the way out to college. Yeah. And it also helped you develop like a bunch of skills that you, that uh, you carried on to college, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like presentation skills, like any interviews I've been in, presentation skills, the stuff I'm doing right now on this podcast, all of this stuff has really been developed through those programs to help me out with that. Yeah. So and and self-confidence, man. Confidence as a person, honestly, <laughs> plus the friends you make, plus the friends you make is huge. Like I still have friends from those first programs that I'm meeting and running into and that I know. It's just, it's so huge. Yeah, I was actually connected to you through... Uh, my FTC team. So mm -hmm. you, you can also yeah. find a bunch of mentors and um, professionals to just, you can just ask them questions whenever you need help or anything. So it's really helpful in building your own network. And yeah. I was actually helping Parker and Justin like last week or something. <laughs> yeah. So what are some pros in like engineering other than like, you can build really cool stuff. Oh, of course. Okay. Um, I really like it because I'm a big critical thinking guy. I'm a huge fan. Like puzzles are a huge thing for me. I love them. 
um, Ruby Cubes, chess puzzles, everything. I'm just a big fan of them, right? So the critical thinking skills, like you get really stimulated critical thinking wise in order to work on those things. Like you have this problem that at times might seem completely impossible to fix, right? And then it just comes down to, you know, shifting your way around and looking at it at just the right angle to where, oh, now the solution is completely obvious. It's like, it's totally blatantly there. You don't even have to think about it anymore, right? So it's stuff like that. And that also comes from just learning new things. You kind of develop that sort of, oh, this is the solution. I found it. And then once you find that solution, it helps you solve a lot of other problems. On top of that, there's team skills. Like I'm on a RoboMasters team now at um, a &M with a lot of people. I think it's like 70 people or something. It's, it's something yeah. old. It's a really big team. And I'm working on CV and it's crazy to me because I'm looking at this code and there's just code and code and files and files. And I'm like, I don't know what half the does because I'm new, you know, but also I don't even need to because I'm working on like they've dedicated me on this problem. Right. And now I'm sitting and I can fully focus on this problem and I have resources in the other people on the team where I can go, Hey, can you take a look at this for me? And like, just see if you can give me a different perspective on it. And those team skills of, being able to be knowing like trusting other people to do what they need to do and having those resources in those team members to help you out with stuff those connections are like really really nice so the, the combination of critical thinking and like uh teamwork that you do for those things is just absolutely awesome mentally it's just such a stimulating sort of thing to do yeah are there like any um cons that you realize from studying engineering like uh, it's time consuming and hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, putting it simply, uh, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff you have to do, especially when you start doing extracurriculars, which with engineering, I mean, you can take your classes and whatever, but your classes are all pretty theoretical. So at least for me, where I've been around robotics and stuff all my year, just doing only theoretical stuff just feels so bland. Like it's just, it, you're not really getting the same sort of response that you would want to get out of it so then you have to start talking about extracurriculars and those are time consuming so i think the most difficult thing about it is time management which granted is also a pro because you get really good at time management but you get stuck in a lot of stuff it's a lot of work um a lot of the classes and just stuff you're learning is pretty difficult but it's nothing to where you can't just put your mind to it and do it it's just you know if you have a friend who's a business major they might be having a pretty much easier time than you and you might be having a much harder time in terms of mm -hmm. the, the workload and what you're focusing on but other than that it's mostly positives yeah so basically engineering is just very time consuming and the classes are theoretical but it, it gets really fun when you actually get to build whatever you're thinking and yeah, well, yeah that's the classes what are theoretical, but those are just to get the knowledge. That's what I was saying. Is you oh, you yeah. end up in those theoretical classes, but you have so many options for research, internships, um, uh, organizations at your college. Like, there's so many options for what you can do to stimulate that more actual problem solving part of it, where you actually want to do something, you want to build something, make something. There's so many options to stimulate that, that it, the, the, really the class is being theoretical. I mean, yeah, you're like not actively building a robot in every single one of your classes every day but at least you're learning the stuff to help you do that outside of them it just adds more time that i was kind of saying that makes yeah. sense yeah that makes sense that makes sense so uh speaking of internships were you able to find any internships uh or like engineering related i mean um i haven't really the applications for those haven't opened up to be honest Mm -hmm. But I do have a couple offers. I don't know if I will be this summer because I'm just for the people that don't know me because I'm assuming nobody here knows me. Um, I'm also a pretty big band kid. I play drums and stuff like that. So I'm looking over the summer at doing DCI, which is a band thing that I'm not going to go into because it's kind of not the point here. But um, just through first stuff, I have gotten a couple like internship offers or like people connections that will get me two internships more or less. Uh, for example, actually y'all's coach offered me um to talk to her if i ever wanted to see if i could get an internship at where she works um just you, you get connections through those first programs for the most part is where i built them from but through engineering you do end up getting a lot of very solid connections to that and plus the nice thing about doing first is whenever you want to go and apply for those internships 
um, one of the things they're looking for is experience, right? And yeah. it's really hard to initially get that experience. Like you mm -hmm. have to find something that doesn't need experience to get there, right? So the nice thing with first is you actually go into this not with like official job experience, but you they a lot of those companies know first, hire out of first, hire out of colleges, colleges of high, like look for kids in first. So because of that, you kind of have that experience you need to apply. So if I did want to apply, um, I'd be in a really good position to do so. I just haven't. Um, I know a lot of people who have. Um, like Peter is in his sophomore year. He did a Google internship last summer, I believe. Um, I have friends in high school that were on FTC with me that had Facebook internships and stuff like that. Just for me, it really wasn't, I didn't really have the time because of band and other stuff like that. But I do know a lot of people with similar resumes to me that have gotten those internships, even big ones at Meta and like Google and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. really solid internships. Um, I know Keon got one at Lockheed Martin, I think, or someone did. I don't remember exactly who it was. But yeah, lots and lots of people that have gotten really good solid interviews yeah first uh engineering has like a lot of different fields that offer a bunch of different internships and engineering is just like a really big field right now so there's like a lot of companies a lot of big companies that are uh that need people working so they'll, <laughs> yeah. they'll actually give a lot of internships and stuff and Especially that, kids. yeah and that's another reason to join a first program because it allows you to build your network so uh, it can or like it gives you a lot of also it gives you a lot of experience in the field uh you get hands-on experience in building programming uh writing engineering notebooks so first programs are really important and i would highly recommend it yeah. um so what uh do you have like a specific field of engineering that you're going into right now yeah, I was talking about it earlier. I want to do biomedical engineering. And I mean, I can go really specific because I've thought about it a whole lot. I want to work on the actual interaction system between bionic prosthetics and the human body. Because in terms of the actual mechanics of a bionic prosthetic, the technology is kind of there. It's really not that hard to replicate, I don't know, a hand or a leg mechanically. Now, granted, with materials and making it light and stuff, it gets a lot harder to engineer it to perfection. But it's there. The technology is there. We just need to improve it a little bit. Where we're really lacking is the actual interaction, like reading what the body is telling that prosthetic to do. And so that specific border point, it's like you have the robot and you have the body. And I want to work right on that line where it translates from body to prosthetic. So that's kind of what I've been wanting to do for the past three, four years. I've pretty much known what I wanted to do just because it's like, it's always been super interesting to me. I want to help people who, like, you know, war heroes come back and they've lost a leg or lost an arm and now they can't work, they can't live their life. It's like tragic to see that. And I want to make them, you know, effectively have a completely normal life. Like, theoretically, I'd like to give them their leg back, you know, or their arm back. So, yeah, that's really what I want to work on right there. Yeah. And, and specifically researching that. Mm hmm and engineering has like a bunch of different fields so uh mm -hmm. if you're interested in engineering you're not limited to just doing one specific thing you can uh like if you wanted you can also take part in uh like computer science related engineering stuff while also doing uh like a mechanical part so um, i'll tell you the mechanical mechanical engineers will find their way to warm into everything <laughs> mechanical and electrical engineering is your more general stuff where your mechanical engineering is more your design stuff like oh if i use this material here and make it this shape it'll hold this much weight you know stuff like that you have civil engineering and architecture to an extent where you're building stuff and you know designing it to support x amount of weight and be cheap as cheap as possible on the least resources aerospace engineering where you're designing everything from satellites to airplanes to drones to helicopters you know um yeah how fans i think is also aerospace engineering which i think is really funny to an extent i don't know that's just me though um and then you have like uh computer science and computer engineering stuff where you're doing more software software engineering where you're creating more like websites and systems like that you have ux engineering where you're just working on user experience and designing taking something that somebody's made and making it more friendly to somebody who's using it um there's just so many 
different kinds of stuff now, chemical engineering, where you're actually designing the materials we use. Mm -hmm. um, what else is there? Petroleum engineering, if you want to work in oil, where you're refining like either the systems we actually use to refine the oil or making new drills to get it out of the out of the like water or ground. Um, I think there's marine engineering to an extent where yeah. you're working on like ocean stuff and environmental stuff more so. Mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. There's so many different. Yeah, just basically, a... basically anything you're interested in, there's probably a field in engineering that relates to that. Which is and pretty you cool. Me, you hear me talking about prosthetics, but biomedical engineering ranges from the scanners, like x-rays they use, mm -hmm. all the way to the tools that a doctor might use in surgery to, you know, prosthetics like I'm doing. There's a huge range. Nanobots are becoming a thing. Brain chips. It's just such a huge range. Yeah, and I personally find it, uh, the coolest thing about engineering is that what you're doing is, like, going to be visibly interpreted into the community. So, like, for example, what you're doing right now, you can visibly see the effects it has, it has on um people that have lost their leg or lost their arm so i think that's the coolest part about engineering to me is that no, you get to cool. yeah you get to see what you're doing like actually help the community which is really awesome yeah no for sure that is a very cool aspect of it i do like that as mm -hmm. well yeah but engineering is just pretty cool so uh absolutely it's yeah basically in summary um if y'all are interested in uh, any field of STEM, basically, you should definitely join a FIRST program. It allows you to get a uh, hands-on experience. It allows you to um, just get better, develop soft skills that you'll need in college. Um, it prepares you for basically your future life. And it's also really fun to uh, interact with other teams and um, interact with your own team, actually um mm -hmm. actually having like fun basically is with your own team is actually a really big part of first so that's why um recently our team went to play pickleball which was really fun as a team building event and yeah first is really Another fun thing. i think one more thing that shouldn't be understated competitions at first doesn't matter if you're winning or losing it's the most fun thing ever you get to talk to so many people and interact with them. And it, it's just such a cool way to see so many different people and from so many different backgrounds all looking at the same thing, doing the same thing. It's like going to a sports game. It's kind of how it ends up feeling like, I think. Yeah. First competitions get really intense, but they're mm -hmm. like really insanely fun. So uh, thank you for joining me today. Um <laughs> Really appreciate it. And I guess this is the end of the first Sammy podcast. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you.